I'm Allison with the Mission 43 Education Pillar, and we're starting a new discovery series where we sit down with the experts to learn more about what it takes to make it in the career field and the education to get you there. So I think this is the first time we're actually officially meeting. Yeah, I think it is actually. <laughs> but thanks so much for sitting down with me. This is a really great opportunity to chat with you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for coming out. This is, this is pretty cool. Well, I don't know how many times I can say it, but thanks for having us. This is a really awesome place. Um, your hangar's so clean. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do here? Uh, so I'm the Assistant Chief Flight Instructor. What does that mean? Well, I, I, you know, a little bit like Dwight Schrute in the office. Assistant to the regional manager. Yeah. So. Uh, not much uh, other than you know helping Al, who's our chief flight instructor, manage all the school flight records and make sure our students' progress is is going the way we want it to go, and and uh, really trying to maintain the standards for a 141 school, okay. so that the the FAA stays happy with us. But uh, more than that, I think I'm I'm really just still a flight instructor like everybody else here, because I, I truly enjoy teaching. Uh, you know, everything that I've learned since I've been here, passing that on to new students. There's, there's not really much better than that. So you were actually a student here? I was, yeah. I, I enrolled here uh, about four and a half years ago now. Four and a half years ago? When did yeah. you graduate? Ooh, two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago. Yeah. So this is one of the opportunities Alicia was talking about when hiring 80% of the students, That's correct? Right. Yeah, exactly. So you'd be a certified flight instructor. Yes. Do I have my acronyms correct? That's like exactly right. Great. <laughs> There's so many of them. <laughs> so tell me about teaching. Uh, teaching is, I, I don't know, I guess it's one of those things that if, if you uh, ever have anybody in your life that just really said something that, that really clicked to you or uh, it meant something to you and, and you changed uh, the whole path of your life because of that one thing someone said, I think teaching and flight instructing is a lot about finding those moments those eureka moments where uh, there's a lot of aviation that actually correlates really, really well with life lessons and life experiences. So we get the chance every single day to touch people's life in a way that, uh, you know, normally you wouldn't just as friends or acquaintances. Uh, you, you really start to mean something to the people around you. And those relationships that you build are going to be lifelong relationships. And you're building these relationships while you're up in the air, mostly? Up in the air and on the ground, <laughs> on the both, ground. absolutely. Alicia mentioned a couple of times we do uh, the ground and the flight training. And the ground training, as hard as it is, is just as important as everything else. And uh, as a student, you'll struggle through the ground, just like you'll struggle through the flight training. So going through those struggles with someone who cares, uh, you know, I got to experience that as a student, and now I get to give that back as an instructor. What does the ground training entail that makes it a little rougher than being up in the air because to me i feel like i would be less inclined to be up in the air than i would be on the ground the the ground training i think speaking as a veteran who you know i, I had 10 years of active duty and then two years reserves before this i learned an entirely different career path before i came here and starting flight training I, it's not like all those life experiences aren't valuable anymore but you have to learn a whole new set of skills and new knowledge. And uh, for a lot of us who have been out of school for a long time, it's challenging to get back in that learning mm -hmm. mindset. Uh, and I think that's a lot of why Alicia was saying that the graduation rate isn't quite as high with veterans, mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes it is just harder to get back into the mindset that you need to, to learn all the knowledge required for aviation. A lot of people think that f learning to fly is just learning to fly an aircraft. But if you don't learn all the regulations and requirements and aircraft systems behind it, uh, you'll never really be a successful pilot. What so. did you do in the military? Oh, I was an electronics technician. Really? Yeah. What aircraft? No aircraft. No craft. I, I was in the Navy, so I worked on uh, radios and radar systems. Oh, cool. So I was on an aircraft carrier, uh, but, and I worked on the radar systems that launched and re recovered the aircraft, but never worked on the aircraft myself. So what gave you the flying bug? Ooh. Uh, when I was in, stationed in Hawaii, my neighbor was a helicopter pilot, and uh, you know I got to s just talk to him a lot about it, and 
uh, one day he asked me if I wanted to go for a flight with him. So, you know, I got to ride in a helicopter in, in a free tour of Hawaii, which <laughs> if, if there's any place that's going to spark a bug of flying, it's going to be in Hawaii in that a helicopter. Might be it. <laughs> yeah, so he, he encouraged it. And, uh, well, this is, this is even more of a long story, but if you don't mind. Please share. When I separated from active duty, I actually enrolled at BSU to finish my electrical engineering degree. Did you? I didn't come to Boise to, to fly. I didn't even know about this flight school, to be honest. Okay. Uh, but my sister-in-law, who was stationed at Mount Home, she was a, a maintenance officer down there. Okay. She bought my wife and I a helicopter tour here at Silverhawk. So we came here for a Christmas lights tour one night. And, I, you know, I absolutely loved it again. This was the second time I'd been in a helicopter. And when we landed, the instructor, I didn't know he was an instructor, just the tour pilot, told me that uh, my VA benefits would pay for the entire program. And as soon as I learned that, the very next day, I disenrolled from BSU and enrolled here at the flight school. And wow. I've been here ever since. Wow. Yeah. So you're truly getting to do just what makes you happy. Yes. Do you prefer so helicopters or? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can tell us. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, I started with the helicopters. and. We didn't even have a, a fixed wing program when I first started here. The fixed wing program started growing after I'd been here for, uh, for a student about a year. Uh, and, and I absolutely love the helicopters. They're so much fun. They're very, very challenging to fly and they really keep you mentally engaged the entire time you're flying, which our chief pilot actually has a, a saying. I always asked him like, which one do you like better too? Because he, he also flies both aircraft. And uh, he told me, if you want to see something, you get in a helicopter. If you want to go somewhere, you get in an airplane. <laughs> and, and I know that to be absolutely true because I do fly both the helicopters and airplanes. And the helicopters are a lot of fun for what we do in the local area. But uh, if you want to go somewhere, uh, you need to get in an airplane and just fly there. <laughs> I just find this all really interesting. Like It's really cool to hear that you went from electrical engineering to flying just out of pure passion. So that's awesome. Thank you so much for that piece of info. I'm wondering for you as someone that spent a significant amount of time in the military and then got out and you're learning something completely different, your paths changed and now you're a full-time student. What was that like for you? It was a hard transition, uh, mostly because I was, I was already in a leadership position in the military. Mm -hmm. And uh, stepping away from that is difficult anyway, just because, uh, you know, the military is not for everyone, but for those of us that, that did stick with it for a little while, I think you really buy into the mission and, and uh, the, the service ideal behind what you're doing. So separating is, is sometimes a, a tough decision. Not, again, not for everybody. Some people, four years is plenty and it's time to go. Uh, but that was a tough transition, just coming back to civilian life and, and letting go of the responsibility that I held in the military. Uh, but I also think it was a really good chance for me to, to have a reset as a human being, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and uh, the student environment here is just, it's such a great place to, to take that step, that transition into civilian life. Because, um, because of what Catherine's built here at Silver Hawk, it's, yeah. it's such a great family environment where everybody knows everybody and we all take care of each other. And, after, after school or after work or whatever it is, we meet up and, and still hang out with each other. It's, uh, so this became a new family for me, uh, much like the military was before. Yeah, that's awesome. So what were some things you did as a student to kind of work through things that, you know, kind of maybe you would have hung up on or maybe some of the veteran students do experience across the board? I went through the degree program at the college. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, my experience is very much based on, on going through the ground classes at a, at a educational institution mm -hmm. instead of the one-on-one -on -one grounds that, mm -hmm. that you might get if you just did it here at Silver Rock. Uh, we still do the one-on-one -on -one grounds even with the college students, but uh, that environment over there is, again, very conducive to working with your peers, and mm -hmm. in this case, my classmates. So um, in between classes even, we would go down to the, the cafe at the college and study together and just do cram sessions and quiz each other. And so all the, all the challenging things, uh, you have an opportunity to uh, learn it at the college, learn it one-on-one -on -one with your instructor, and then try to teach it to your classmate, which, uh, you know, if, if you've ever been in, in a learning environment, as soon as you can teach something, you know you really understand mm -hmm. it. So uh, all the difficult spots, the, the things we really struggled with, we just 
gave it a shot trying to teach it to each other and failed miserably many, many times. <laughs> but failing with each other is, is perfectly fine because then once you go to the day where you're taking your test for certification, you're ready for it. And, and that made the whole process really simple for us. How many instructor pilots are here at Silverhawk? Ooh, I, I really should have a count of that since I'm in charge of them all. <laughs> I want to say it's, it's something around 22 instructors. 22. Um, I, would, I think it's half and half, split half and half between the two, fixed wing and rotor wing. How many are prior students? Is that a tougher question? <laughs> all of them except for one. Wow. wow. I think, is that chief fact checked to me? It's good. <laughs> all but one. All but one. Yeah. Fact checked. We're good. Yeah. So how many students per instructor are there? We typically, I, th I think, run with about four to five students per oh, instructor, wow. which is, it's a pretty good workload. Um, the instructors stay really busy all the time, but the students still have access to the instructors uh, whenever they need to. And, and the relationships, you know, I got to see this again as a student and now as an instructor. It's really fun even to build those relationships where uh, I, I know my instructor's personal life a little bit so that I, I know, oh, he's on vacation. I'm not going to call him this weekend. <laughs> but most of the time, you know, I, I give my number to all of my students mm -hmm. so that anytime they have any questions or concerns, they give me a call. And it's, it's really nice having that that easy access to your flight instructor. How much time are you spending with your students? It sounds like quite a bit. It's quite a bit. Yeah. Just flying for a private rating is, uh, for a helicopter, for example, we, we usually go anywhere from 60 to, to 80 hours flying with them just in their private rating. And that's in the aircraft. So uh, every, every flight you spend another 20 minutes on the ground before and after. So. All of that really starts to add up. You, yeah. you spend a few hundred hours with all of these students as they're going through between the grounds, the flights, and, and all of the flight training. And I know you mentioned right after we chat, you have to go do a ground, correct? That's <laughs> right, yeah, a, a stage <laughs> check ground. And is that someone that scheduled time with you, and gets to pick that time, gets to be flexible about mm -hmm. it? Yeah, that's uh, another great thing about Silverhawk is uh, the instructors are all contract instructors. so. They get to set their own schedules. Whenever they would like to work, they can work. And the same thing, uh, because the instructors are so flexible with their schedules, the students can then communicate with the instructors on what works best for them. So some students need to work a full-time job mm. or you know, part-time job, whatever it is. If you know, I'm, I'm married with two kids, so I have a family that I would really yeah. love to spend time with. Uh, so I'm able to work just a regular nine to five, but some people love to work at night times and weekends. And, and if you have a full-time job, then those are the instructors that uh, are best for you. So we really try to match it up. And Alicia does a great job at, at matching students with the best instructor for them. I know we talked about this a little bit, but what's your one nugget of advice to give a transitioning military member that would go into a, um, a degree-seeking flight program? Have a really open mind. This, you know, in the military, sometimes I think pilots are glamorized a little bit. Uh, we, th we think about fighter pilots or uh, combat helicopter pilots or whatever else it is, but uh, this isn't that. This is, you know, we, we fly pretty small aircraft here and, and they're really meant for training. Um, that doesn't mean you won't one day fly those bigger aircraft or fly the jets and uh, that's kind of why we start here at, at this small level. You fly trainer aircraft which are very difficult to fly and takes um, you know, it, it takes someone special to want to do this. But if you, if you actually want to be a commercial airline pilot or you want to fly a sky crane someday, then this is where you start. So have an open mind for the whole process, the program, and enjoy it as you go. You know, have fun with it. Well, thank you. I know you've yeah. got somewhere to be and I don't want to yeah. hold you yeah. up, Sorry. but thank you so much for your time. This has been absolutely incredible hearing from someone that's prior military, that's a prior student, and now you're here doing what you love as an instructor pilot. Yeah, I even love this. This is great. This thank is you great. so much. Well, thank you.